Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Uh, thank you very much for joining us for our webinar today called How Park Industries Increase Their Performance by Archiving. Uh, today it's going to be presented by uh, Daniel Metling, the IT manager from Park Industries. And my name is Stuart Manley, Senior Account Executive with Team Kane. Uh, I'll also be presenting and, and moderating. And again, here are your presenters, uh, Dan Metling, IT Manager at Park Industries, uh, and myself, Stuart Manling. So you get an idea of what we look like today. It is a new picture. Uh, for the agenda, um, we're going to talk about Park Industries. Dan's going to go into his company. Uh, he's going to discuss uh, MRP optimization, um, using Project for Archiving, discuss the key takeaways and benefits, and specifically archiving your uh, JDE data, why are you doing it, when to do it, and specifically what to do. Um, so now uh, at this time, I'd like to introduce uh, Dan to everybody, uh, who's the, again, IT manager for Park Industries, and, and he's going to share with you how uh, Park is able to uh, increase the performance uh, by using uh, Purgit for archiving. Okay, Dan, take it away. Thanks, Stuart. Uh, oh, you're welcome. Like, thank you, everyone, for joining in today. Um, a little bit about Park Industries. Uh, we are located in St. Cloud, Minnesota, and we are the largest manufacturer of stone working equipment in uh, North America. Um, our machines are, are what put the sinkholes and the edges on granite, uh, hard stone, and man-made stone-like materials. And Park Industries has been around for, uh, for over 60 years. Started out just like many companies do with uh, a dozen people and making just a couple small machines. And we've grown into a company now of uh, over 300 people. Um, and uh, like I said, largest manufacturer of this type of machinery uh, in North America. So we, uh, the, that last bullet there, it talks about solutions. And, and I think that's important because um, we do more than just manufacture, which increases the complexity of, of some of the things that we're doing. Um, so that, that just puts a little more burden on J.D. Edwards as we, as we do what we need to do to, to get things to our customers. So a little bit about MRP optimization. Um, we went live with J.D. Edwards in uh, the summer of 2006. Uh, we were on 8.12 at that time. Um, currently, we are on 9.1, um, tools release of 9.1 as well. And a number of years ago, um, roughly five years ago, six years ago, we started to notice that our uh, our MRP process was was taking quite a bit of time. It, it wasn't causing a problem for us yet, but it uh, it was starting to slow down. Um, kind of one of those things that you put in the back of your head and, and you move on. Um, but uh, but it wasn't too much after that where uh, where it really started to cause problems. It was, it was bumping into, uh, into business hours. You know, we would start it at one minute after midnight and it was starting to run into uh, business hours as people would start coming in. Um, you know, our manufacturing starts at about five in the morning and our office people are usually there by about seven or eight. And, and so it was causing problems with, uh, with some of those folks as it was when MRP is running, as everyone knows, it, it really slows J.D. Edwards down, at least in certain areas, and and uh, and cause cause issues. Um, as we uh, you know, as we as we started to look at the situation, um, we we investigated you know a few things. We looked at um, you know, what could we do to optimize MRP just within J.D. Edwards? Um, you know, we, we, we 
thought of as many different things as we could, but in the you know in the long run we needed we needed MRP to run in a in a acceptable amount of time, and besides MRP we also needed JD Edwards just to run a little better. Um, you know it's not it wasn't a constant flow, but it was it was enough request that JD Edwards is slow that you know we we really needed to to dig into this and and find out what was going on um, around MRP and just in general JD Edwards um, performance. Um, so it, with the with the fact that um, you know we had never done anything with our data, so at that point, say you know four years ago, you know we had uh, we had six years of, of data under our belt, um, and you know we don't we don't sell a lot of machines because our machines are capital equipment, but we have we have a lot of work orders that go out with our machines. Um, when they go through the shop, there's there's a lot of a lot of work orders, and so we're we're creating a lot of transactions. And so our data, even though you know we we sell several hundred machines a year, um, you know that quantity isn't fantastic in any regard, but uh, um, it is it is the number of work orders that that's associated with those machines that, that that made things increase at a at a larger rate. So I took it upon myself to 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 look at uh, you know all the Oracle documentation I could find for MRP performance optimization, look at every everything that everybody is has put online, how you might optimize MRP, get it to run faster. And I made I made several changes that that worked. Um, it saved us some time, um, but it wasn't the, you know, the silver bullet that made MRP run, you know, so much quicker that we didn't have to worry about it. Um, but then we finally run into uh, the realization where, you know what, we can't continue to run full, full MRP every night. So at that point, then we, we started running full MRP only on the weekend, uh, and we ran the net change uh, during the week, which was okay, but um, our schedulers did not like that very much because the full MRP gives them just a little bit more than than what the uh, net change does, um, so that was not the the solution that everybody wanted. Um, so it was, it was a band aid. We we needed to still find something so that we could run full MRP every night. So the story continues, and and as we uh, as we ran this net change. We discovered that net change continued to go longer and longer. Um, we uh, we started to run into um, net change running into business hours as well. Um, you know, one of the things that I wanted to to say up front, I I forgot to, so let me interject that right now. Um, I want I wanted everyone to understand our our environment. Uh, we just like most people still do. We we uh, have an on-premise JD Edwards. Um, we are a Windows shop, so we're running things with uh, uh, Microsoft SQL and Windows servers. Uh, but we are also fully virtualized with VMware, and we run our uh, Virtual foundation off of a spinning disk uh, array. Um, there are obviously 15,000 RPM drives, uh, so very fast spinning drives. But that is that that has been our situation. Um, 
So with that in mind as well, the, the number of transactions that that SQL database has to uh, filter through to do its job when you're virtualized and running on that uh, those spinning disks, it, it, it is important to keep things as skinny as possible, if you will. Um, and as, as the net chain started to run long, um, you know, we evaluated what we could do. Um, I don't have a real big IT department, and uh, and so we don't we didn't have the resources to do do things on our own. Um, you know, we had talked. I, I do have a, a couple developers, and we talked about doing our own archiving, but it would be a, a too big of a project. Um, so that that kind of went on the wayside. So we were looking at, at doing something outside of, of something we could accomplish in-house. So what we did is, is we started looking at, at some third-party um, um, archiving, purging solutions. Um, when I started looking at this, you know, when when I was looking at MRP optimization, I was also, you know, I, I noticed a lot about JD Edwards um, built-in purging applications, but I didn't want to go there because we didn't want to purge. We wanted to archive. I didn't want to get rid of the data permanently. Um, I wanted that to be available to to my users, um, so the so the built-in purge uh, just uh, couldn't go there at all. Um, and like that last bullet there says, uh, we wanted to archive um, so that it would be available to our users uh, in a separate environment. Um, so during the during the investigation, um, the purge it product was one of the one of the uh, um, applications that I saw, and at uh, last year's Collaborate conference, um, I uh, I attended uh, one of their sessions and and approached uh, uh, Team Kane and the Clickit people and and started the process of of finding out a little bit more about uh, Purge it and uh, you know we we did a we did a demo and and uh, I, I sent information to Team Kane, and they they did uh, a, a, an analysis of our data. Um, talked to a top, talked to a couple of their current customers, and really started to feel comfortable with uh, with the Purgit um, product and and the Team Kane people. Um, so the because I had done previous research, um, the process, I think, actually went pretty quickly. Um, you know, once once we started the, the talks, um, things went quick. And, and you know, I, I, I said I, I felt comfortable with the Purge product, and these, these bullets um, explain some of the reasons why. Um, I really like the way that it was. It was. It's an ASU. It just goes into JD Edwards. It's just another module within JD Edwards. Um, we could do the installation in house, even though, um, you know, like I said, we, we don't have uh, a very large IT department. Um, but you know, we do have enough um, knowledge that that we can we could do the install and and we could do. Uh, much of the installation and the configuration ourselves um, very straightforward um, and the uh, you know going in and doing a purge or looking at what got purged it's it's just another to the users it looks just like another JD Edwards uh, application it's just right on the menu tree and, and we can just go into it just like we're going into any other JD Edwards application um, uh, it's nice with the ability to, to 
run jobs in proof um, so that you can see exactly what's going to get archived um, and and with the reversing ability too. Um, as I as I was talking to the rest of our operations team, um, our our controller for Park Industries, um, he was very very relieved to know that that the Purgit product had this reversing capability, where um, you know if if we if we did an archive and we thought that well this this went too far we we did too much data, we could reverse that and put it right back into our, our production environment. Um, and then too, after, after uh, you know, you do an archive, you have audit files. Um, one, of the, one of the things that my users like um, a lot is the fact that after I've run uh, archives, I can show them um, the transactions that did not um, archive and the reason why. And so oftentimes they'll go in and they'll, they'll start fixing them because these are generally old files that someone just didn't complete. They didn't complete the work order. The sales order just sat out there at some, you know, non-complete status and, and they shouldn't be like that, so they'll go fix them, and, and then they want me to run, rerun the archive right away because they, they like clean data. <laughs> so um, that's another nice thing that, that we found uh, and that the users like to be able to see that. Um, so we actually, like I said, we actually uh, did uh, the installation and much of the configuration um, of purge it um, because it was easy to understand and implement um, we we did run into a little hiccup that kind of set our project back we would we would be much further along uh, than we are right now even but uh, I I lost an internal resource to a consulting firm during our uh, during our our implementation, configuration, and testing phase. So it, it kind of set us back for a little bit. But the nice thing about it is, like I said, it's it's easy enough that uh, that I was able to pick up where this person had left off and just complete what we needed to get complete. Um, so that was that was very nice. Um, I, I mentioned a little bit about how it's just part of JD Edwards, looks just like any other um, application. Um, and, and because you can, you can choose to archive any chunk of data, um, because this, our, our lack of a resource after our, our, my one resource left, um, we were able to just kind of do this as a back burner project where I would archive a year, and then we would, I would have users go look at it. You know, this was during the testing phase. I would, I would archive a year, and they would go look at it, and and verify that they thought the data was good, uh, that what they thought should be archived was archived, and what they thought should be still in production was still in production, and we could just take little bites out of it, um, and, and that kept it moving along but we didn't have to just run full blast into it. So, so we performed our, our archive tests, um, doing one or two years at a time. And during the, during the investigation that I did with, uh, with the rest of our park industries, um, we settled on, on, going with four years plus current. Uh, a lot of companies will do two years plus current or three years plus current. Um, because of some of the, the, the sales order, the, the lookup of sales orders that we do in particular, um, we didn't want 
to go any more than four years right now. Um, we, we service our machines for life. So we have 60-year-old machines, seriously, that we are still servicing. So during that service time, we often um, go back and look at work orders and things like that. So we do look at, at uh, archived data, but uh, not quite as much as, as people thought we might. So look at the key takeaways. and. And this was, this was more about increasing performance than it was saving space. Um, even, even with the fast spinning disks or whatever storage you have, you know, storage is still pretty cheap. Um, but performance is not. Um, you know, if you have a system that's not performing very well, that causes a lot of grief for your users. And, and they just, they do not like the system if it's slow. So performance costs you a lot. Um, it, it costs reputation of, of J.D. Edwards in, in a lot of cases. So keeping that performance going is, is quite, a, quite a victory. Um, that next bullet, we've got, uh, you know, at, at this point in in our test environment, um, we have our full six years of data, and and actually um, the MRP runtime. Um, I had initially reported it to Stuart at 45 percent. We're actually um, I miscalculated. We're actually at 55 percent. So we're just over uh, 50 percent um, decrease of MRP runtime uh, with getting rid of those six years. And, and I tell you what, I was, I was amazed at the, at the number of, of records that came out of our database. Um, some of you know, the tables that were archiving, it, it, was, it was really nice to watch those uh, record, record counts or those row counts in the database go down. Um, we are right now still on the initial archive and production, and uh, and the MRP runtime um, is is actually a little more than fifteen percent um, after after letting MRP run for a while. Uh, the average is just over twenty percent. Um, so so getting getting some pretty good. Uh, decreases, and I'm not sure if other people experience this, but our MRP changes from night to night, um, not real dramatically, but uh, but sometimes it can it can change by uh, by an hour even um, even now that we've we've decreased things just depending on on what what got done the day before. So if you look at our at our key benefits, um, like I said, we didn't want to purge anything. We wanted it available. So having data available in a separate environment is, is key. Um, being able to just jump over to the archive environment if needed um, really, really put people at ease. Um, our MRP runtime has decreased since the archive. Um, you know, like I said, it, it's over. We've decreased it by over half in our test environment, and and I'm expecting as we get to our ultimate goal of, of four years plus current in our production that we should see uh, um, similar or even better, because our our production uh, environment obviously runs in a in something that has a little more horsepower than our test. Um, increased system performance. Um, people were were very happy with with how um, searches uh, return so much faster. Our our finance people are just ecstatic um, and they're looking forward to getting to that four years plus current in production because in the test environment um, when they when they do things in AP AR item ledger general ledger. 
things are so much faster for them. Um, you know, the system just does not have to filter through millions of records. It's, it's you know, several hundred thousand records instead of millions of records. So it's, it's just a, a huge uh, performance boost. And, and as, as we were doing our testing, and they started to see the data that was that was in the test and or in the archive environment. And now that we've got uh, a couple years archived in the production, um, I've had several users state to me that um, you know they they thought that they would have to go into the archive more, but uh, they're finding that. You know, 95% of of their job is is all on current data. They they don't have to go into the archive very much. Um, so that was that was a huge huge win for us too, overcoming that that idea that oh we're going to have to be switching between these environments all the time. It 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 just didn't happen that way. Uh, so Stuart, I think that's. That's what I have. Well, great, Dan. Thanks so much, and thanks for the uh, um, uh, description of, uh, of the process you went through and sharing the additional new uh, improved performance as well in test and, and, and production for archiving. So that's great to hear. Um, just wanted to uh, uh, talk about some of the uh, top five reasons a little bit um, about why people archive, just so uh, everyone gets an idea about that before we go back to Dan. And if there's any questions, he'll be more than happy to, to answer them, and I'll check them uh, in a second. Um, so top five reasons that, that uh, we found uh, people want to uh, archive uh, is legal compliance. Uh, again, many companies need to keep at least uh, you know two years plus one year uh, in production. Um, Database maintenance, obviously, data integrity is a huge issue. And until people, you know, go through a purging or archiving, they really don't have a sense of the data integrity uh, that they have there. They're not sure um, uh, what's going on in terms of size, what the heavy hitters are. Uh, there could be some uh, issues there. Um, but because this is one of, uh, you know, the back-end type uh, solutions, they want it to be simple. Nobody wants to get up in the morning and say, I want to archive. So uh, if a look and feel is easy it's, it's, and it's simple to do and uh, straightforward, then uh, that makes it a lot easier to, 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 to focus on archiving. And uh, as Dan mentioned, uh, it's all about getting results and improved performance in, in, in their instance uh, because performance is very, uh, very important. And so uh, the next area we want to talk about is archiving your JDE data and, and when is the right time to do it. And uh, Dan, I uh, wanted to ask you how you approach the timing of when it was the best time for you to do that and, and, and the process, the thought process that went into making that decision. Sure. Well, you know, for, for us, we we should have started the process a couple years earlier. Um, you know, we, we should have started before things got to be as big of a problem as they were. Um, so, you know, for those people who, who are, are fresh into J.D. Edwards or They've had JD Edwards for a while, and and they're saying, well, we're not seeing any issues yet. I, I would say, great, start thinking about it now. Um, you know, you, you may not have to start archiving right now, but you should be thinking about it. And when you see the signs, when you see uh, system performance starting to uh, to decrease a little bit, you see something like MRP um, continually, you know, creeping up in time. Um, start right then and get the ball rolling because, you know, archiving your data is easy. It, it's the it's the process of of 
getting the, the rest of the company to agree to it, that takes time. So start before you need to. A very good point. <laughs> yeah, you've got to get everybody on board, so uh, absolutely. Um, and when is the best, uh, uh, you know, time to uh, uh, to look at it? So, as you were mentioning, uh, how, how did you come up with your go forward plans? When to archive? How much needs to be accessed in production mode? Um, you know, for example, by your business users, and you had mentioned that you were had a concern with your business users. They may perceive that the uh, they're not going to have access to the archive data. You're not doing a lot of orders, and they want to be able to have access to things. There's a lot of stuff that's open. Um, what what was the thought process that uh, went into that? Well, we uh, you know we we talked or I talked through all of the uh, business line leaders, um, just explaining what the uh, what the the idea was behind archiving how it would work, how people would interact with data once this, this was in place. And, and we just, we, we tried to identify the, the exceptions. You know, what are the instances that, that would stop us from being able to use uh, the archive, you know, or, or have to go into the archive data? Um, and most of it came from around our service, customer service people. And, and like I said, we service everything. Um, if, if there's a machine that's still out in the field, we service it. So, you know, they, they might want to be able to go into an old sales order or, or an old work order to see how, uh, how a part was made, at, you know, whenever it was, it was created. So. So that was some of the some of the things that we had to overcome, and uh, and it's it's just a matter of of talking through with your your business line people um, to to really make sure that you're you're meeting the needs of the company um, and while you're doing this. Okay, good to hear. And yeah, with 60 years of uh, of equipment out there. <laughs> That you're still servicing, you you definitely need to know what you need to leave open uh, and accessible. Um, and as the slide shows, you also need to consider legislative rules and regulations for your industry uh, to determine how accessible archive data needs to be as well. Um, just wanted to touch base uh, a bit about wh what data and and. Um, Sort of get an understanding of uh, what the heavy hitters are, uh, what the perceived heavy heavy hitters are of data. Dan had touched uh, on some of the, the, the tables and the amount of records there were, and usually run into surprises. And uh, uh, the typical heavy hitters are, are GL, APAR, purchase order inventory, and sales order processing. Um, and as you know, we talked about the the standard is, is normally you know keep two years uh, uh, current plus uh, two years in production. Um, and if you already have an archive, keep another two years in archive tables. Um, we've seen clients with up to seven years in production. But again, it, it just really depends on your industry uh, to determine what that should be. Um, we found out um, with Click IT that uh, and, and ourselves that uh, some systems are more clogged than you think they would be. The reverse can be true as well. Uh, you might think you have a lot of data in work orders or inventory, but really you're doing better than you think. So the problem may be elsewhere. So uh, it's good to run the data analysis and see what that data looks like. We will provide you with a complete analysis uh, of your uh, of your standard modules and anything that's customized and and, and, and provide recommendations as well. Um, in terms of what are you going to archive, um, again, you need to understand your, your data retention policy in terms of archiving and purging based on legislative business and legal requirements, um, historical par uh, comparisons that you need um, uh, from the past and that you'll need going forward. 
Um, one customer uh, decides to keep uh, current plus two years in production and keep rolling an archive of the five prior years in an archive. So you have a lot of flexibility so that the software is adaptable to what your needs are uh, in terms of uh, what should you archive and what that should look like uh, in terms of production and non-production mode. Um, and having production access to the archive data uh, we know is beneficial to users because they, they don't need to sign out and they don't need to sign back in uh, to an archive environment. And as Dan was mentioning, that seems to be a uh, very convenient. We get a lot of requests of people asking, can they view the archive data in read-only mode? Uh, and so it maintains it, its integrity and they have access to it because they need to refer it uh, to it on a frequent basis and the answer is absolutely. Um, so uh, again, just want to talk that uh, about purging and archiving and that they don't equal each other and obviously uh, the different reasons for purging versus archiving. Um, and as Dad said, you want to uh, move sooner rather than later and uh, it doesn't take that much time once you get everybody on board to archive first, and you can do it pretty quickly, uh, uh, assuming you've got the, the resources or we can help with that. Um, it looks and feels similar to JDE since it's native to JDE, and so that seems to be a big level of comfort for many customers like Dan who uh, can save a lot of time. Um, people who are JDE users can jump right into it and help. Uh, you have a new hire you want to bring in who's coming in to help Dan because somebody left. They'll be very familiar with it. Um, making use of uh, E1 pages, data selection, processing options, and menus, and data sources and databases. So it just, uh, just makes it so much easier to work with. Uh, and so within a few days of installing, configuring, uh, you could be ready to get started once everyone's in agreement uh, on, on, on what that archiving should look like. And self-sufficiency. So as Dan was mentioning, uh, you don't need to rely on outside consultants going forward, and most of it you can do yourself. Um, obviously, we can be there to help as needed as, as resources become uh, uh, strained or unavailable. Um, so that, again, is another uh, value add long term uh, that you're able to manage that yourself. Um, the archives run in batch mode. They'll run while users are using JDE. So um, some other systems, uh, some other solutions you may run into uh, where you have to have downtime, shut down the system to do your archiving. Uh, with uh, Purge it, it just runs smoothly uh, in the background and very, very little uh, impact uh, in performance. Uh, and your users, as I mentioned, have the convenience to view the archive data uh, in the production uh, environment. Um, also, uh, you can set up the archive per training of the non-standard tables that you are using, and Purgit has a great uh, 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 solution for making it very simple to join, uh, uh, do table joins and, and associate relationships right down to uh, the associated document level uh, levels for uh, all the different modules. So whatever that workflow and whatever business rules you have, uh, the purge is very adaptable to work uh, for what you want to archive and what you want to purge um, and, and the associated doc documents uh, right down to that level as well. Um, talked a little bit about the detailed online audit trails. Um, but they are there as well. Uh, and as Dan was mentioning, if something uh, is in closing because an old sales order is open, Dan can uh, get an email letting him know what that is. He can send that off directly to the in individual whose responsibility it is to uh, close a sales order, for example, uh, instead of him having to run around and figure it out and do it. There's an explanation uh, for uh, uh, every reason why something won't archive or purge. Uh, and make it make it uh, very simple to uh, delegate that responsibility to the individual whose responsibility it is to help uh, close that batch. Uh, as Dan mentioned, the archiving and purges can be run in, in, in proof or final mode, so that's great as well, and it is uh, controller uh, have peace of mind as well. 
uh, again, with the full reversal functionality and availability for any archive or purge. Um, some people don't realize this, but there's a dashboard uh, availability using standard JDE PowerForm program that you can get from Oracle, uh, and there's no additional license. And um, we show people this dashboard, and they 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 really like it, and they wonder, uh, you know, how they can use it. So that's a nice bonus uh, available as well. Um, and Click IT uh, provides a purge a customer portal for downloads of all the documentation. Uh, anything that you need in terms of uh, the knowledge database is there as well. Um, we're right now at about uh, 247. Just want to check if there are any other questions before um, we finish off. We're coming to the end. Dan, did you, did you have anything else that you wanted to add at this time? Um, no, I, I think I had gone over everything that, that I had wanted to go over. Um, I don't think there's anything else. Mm -hmm. Okay. Terrific. Um, so uh, just want to chat a little bit about who Keaton Keen is, what we do, and how we uh, add value for, for, for customers in the JDE world. We've been a uh, consulting service partner for JDE Edwards since 1995. We specialize in upgrades, migration, spot consulting, training, and rollouts. Uh, and we also have added uh, best-of-breed uh, JDE tools native to JDE, uh, like Purge, where we see a tremendous value in leveraging um, uh, your investment in JDE platform, leveraging applications, making it easier for you to uh, integrate additional applications without having to go to third-party uh, uh, bolt-ons that may have uh, uh, a higher total cost of ownership, uh, potential integration issues, helping you to keep things in sync uh, as you're doing upgrades to your applications and your tools releases and taking advantage of that working with uh, Oracle validated integrated solutions like Purgit. Um, ScanMan is another uh, uh, Oracle validated native to JDE solution that we provide uh, for AP automation uh, software uh, and, and workflows uh, and OCR document management. Um, PacMan for automating package builds. Uh, if you do a high number of package builds, uh, usually at least 10 a week. Um, and if you have a lot of uh, 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 people doing uh, requiring password resets and are taxing the resources of the, uh, uh, the IT and help desk departments um, can have single sign-on uh, with a self-service password reset. Um, so there's a lot of ways to leverage and improve automation um, uh, with these types of tools. Um, Dimension Swift Test is just an easy way to test natively within the Enterprise One again a way to save time to have a look and see uh, uh, as you're going to be doing some uh, upgrades and tools and, and applications, what's the impact going to be. Uh, spreadsheet server is, for heavy Excel users is a way to uh, uh, automate and, and improve distribution and the creation of reports and, uh, and analysis uh, going forward and having real-time updates from multiple uh, uh, databases as well and multiple ERPs uh, within a single platform using this Excel add-on. And QuickBiz, which is an app builder uh, which reduces development time for uh, uh, heavy-duty uh, complex calculations. Um, and uh, that's it for our, uh, our, our sales pitch on who, who Team Kane is. Uh, I'd like to take this time to thank uh, Dan for his excellent presentation and for everybody for uh, uh, participating in the webinar. Okay, I don't see any questions at this time, but I do see that um, someone had mentioned to me that another uh, Purgit customer had similar results of an increased uh, uh, MRP performance, and they took 50% of their work order data out, and their MRT run time data went from um, eight hours down to 90 minutes, which was a, an 80% uh, performance increase. So that, uh, uh, to your point, uh, Dan was, a, uh, uh, again, another customer who had a significant uh, uh, benefit on system performance as well. Sure.
Dan, I do have a question here. Sure. Can you put a purge and archive routines on the JDE scheduler? And I have an answer as well, and that came from uh, one of our uh, uh, Click IT personnel who said, yes, you can. They are just JDE batch jobs, so you can use the JDE scheduler just like any other JDE batch job. Yeah, that's what I would have expected. <laughs> mm -hmm. That was easy. Yeah. Uh, I have another question. Do you need to take the system down in order to archive? And again, I talked about that, that uh, it runs in uh, yeah, a batch, uh, in uh, uh, not a batch, a, uh, uh, you can run it at the same time as a UBE, correct, Dan? And correct. there's no downtime. So right. uh, we've spoken to other customers who've had other uh, systems, and again, it depends on the customer and how much custom stuff they have and, and, and other related uh, third-party applications where they have to shut down. But I've spoken to some customers who've had to shut down for a significant period of time in order for them to do their once-a-year archive. And I'm talking like, you know, a day or two. So you run the UBE yeah, is... and... I was just going to say, yeah, this is... You, you kick it off and it just runs in the background and I didn't really even see any performance issues. Um, things were just working as, as they normally would. Right, exactly. It was our pleasure to speak with you again. My name is Stuart Manley, Senior Account Executive with Team Kane. We will be at Collaborate and so if anybody here is uh, uh, coming to collaborate, please feel free to come by and uh, meet with us. Uh, we'll be at booth number uh, 354, uh, and uh, we, look, uh, we look forward to uh, uh, hearing back from you and speaking with you soon. All right, thanks again very much for your time. I appreciate it, and have a great day.